aftermath of the Deans and Anderson Powell poll uh, test to failure. Now let's start off with the Deans. Um, the Deans was a little disappointing, probably uh, a problem on my part. I mean, I do consider myself a very good solder person, but the Deans failed, although it failed at uh, up around 350 amps uh, at the solder joint. Um, there, I apologize for the one video of the meters not being caught as uh, the person controlling the camera did not turn it on. Um, that would be myself. Um, but we did have an iPhone picture that caught it from a different angle. Um, if we take a look at the uh, Dean's connector, you can see it is shiny. It did arc, but I don't see an arc mark on the solder. And there is a, probably hard to see in the video, there is a good coat of solder on the terminal itself. It was soldered slightly off center, but there was good adhesion and good transfer of solder. Um, it just, I believe, reached the uh, melting point of the solder and there was a slight pull on this cable with the uh, battery tester hooked up to it. And uh, it just uh, parted ways. Um, the connector itself is fine. The terminals show no sign of overheating or getting hot. And again, this uh, held about 350, uh, 380 amps, and then the wire itself started to be compromised. The uh, insulation started melting um, just before the, the solder joint itself um, parted ways. The mechanical crimp connectors on the end are all fine, don't show any signs of heat. And we had uh, on the Deans about 2.8 to 3. Uh, excuse me, 0.28 to 0.32 volts drop across the uh, Dean's connector. The 45 amp Anderson power pole um, looks mighty pretty. Um, I will say though, it, it held in there. Uh, this uh, failed up around um, 380 amps, 360 amps, and uh, a lot of heat generated in the wire, melted the insulation. Again, the mechanical crimps on the end are intact, held together well. The Dean's connect, uh, excuse me, the Anderson power pole connector never parted. The plastic did melt, but the contactors probably welded together. Um, yeah, but they did arc together on the ends and uh, stayed fused. Again, that's uh, carrying about 360 amps. I did have a peak of I think 400 amps on air. It was pretty hard to control with the carbon pile. The 75 amp uh, Anderson power pole connector. The connector itself held up very well. No signs of heat buildup in the connector at all. The terminals themselves, as beefy as they are, show no signs of heat failure. And the wire at that point started to melt and go on fire. So that's uh, actually didn't go on fire, but started to melt severely. So I terminated the test at that point before we needed a fire extinguisher. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Anderson power poles uh, are the connector. I mean, if we could get a slightly smaller housing using a 75 amp terminal, um, they would be ideal for uh, 5, 600, 700 class helicopters, but the 45 amp connector is uh, no slouch. Uh, it held together up around 300 and something amps and uh, with today's 65C battery packs, 5,000 milliamp, we'd be approaching the 320, 325 amp mark. So we're just about at the point where these would fail if you did a, a super long climb out and uh, had a bad connection. And again, this is number 10 gauge wire. Using number 8 gauge wire probably would have failed the connector first before the wire itself uh, started to get hot and melt the insulation. So there we have it. Hope some of this information was helpful. Um, like I say, on my next uh, 700 class or 800 class helicopter, I'll definitely try to make room for the 75 amp connector. Um, 500, 600, 450, um, the 45 amp uh, should be more than adequate. And uh, if you like the solder, no problem with using Dean's. 